Thanks for being with us in prayer today. I'm Father Ron Hoy, and this is the God Minute. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and And my my mouth mouth shall declare declare your praise. Psalm 17 Guard me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the violent attack of the wicked. My foes encircle me with deadly intent, their hearts tight shut, their mouths speak proudly. They advance against me, and now they surround me. Their eyes watch to strike me to the ground. They are like a lion ready to claw, like some young lion crouched in the hiding. Arise, O Lord, confront them, strike them down. Let your sword deliver my soul from the wicked. Let your hand, O Lord, deliver me from those whose portion in the present life is fleeting. May you give them their fill of your treasures. May their offspring rejoice in plenty and leave their wealth to their children. As for me, in justice, I shall behold your face. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 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 A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verses 7 to 9. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, based on faith. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. One of my early memories as a child was learning the prayer of St. Anthony, There are a variety of versions, but the one that has stuck with me for most of my life is this. St. Anthony, please look around. Something is lost and has to be found. Many Catholics who rely on St. Anthony for help finding things will emphatically tell you that he has never let them down. While I've not exactly experienced a 100% success rate with St. Anthony, he is usually more helpful than not. This comes to mind, I think, because of St. Paul's repeated use of the word loss in today's reading from his letter to the Philippians. The Philippians represented the very first successful Christian community in Greece and were very dear to both St. Paul and St. Timothy, his disciple. Because Christianity had established itself in Philippi early on, Paul's writings to the community represent a kind of development of theological ideas about Christ and our relationship with Jesus. One way to interpret what Paul is sharing with the Philippians can come across negatively. He might sound only as if the way to really have a deep relationship with Christ is to give up a lot of things. For example, he writes, For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish. There are plenty of other writings from St. Paul in which he tells his congregations 
of the hardships he has experienced for the sake of the gospel. It would be easy to read the letter to the Philippians from that perspective of offering something up because of this. Very similar to the idea of giving up something during the season of Lent, only giving it up all the time. I think something deeper, though, is going on, and this might be helpful for all of us in our prayer and our efforts to have a closer relationship with Jesus. Think of it this way. If my doctor tells me that my blood pressure is dangerously high, I may be asked to reduce the levels of salt or sodium in my diet. I need to lose the salt. Yes, it would be challenging, but it would also mean that I was losing something that was bad for me. Not giving up something good or enjoyable simply for the sake of giving something up, but losing something that's bad for me. When parents accept children into their lives, they sacrifice quite a a great deal. They lose private time until their children are grown. Financial decisions must reach beyond the wage earners, and the needs of the children come first. And yet children bring so much joy into the lives of their parents that often enough the father and mother do not even think of the sacrifice, the loss of their individual selves. This is how I think St. Paul is encouraging the Philippians. He's encouraging them to lose things that are not Christ-like, to lose selfishness, violence, pettiness, and exclusion. St. Paul explains that he has found relationship with Jesus and has lost his fear of simply doing something good because he's supposed to. As we consider our own invitation to follow Jesus, May we have the grace, the courage, and insight to identify what needs to be lost so that we can draw closer to God who deeply loves us and have nothing blocking us from Him. Blending our voices together with Jesus, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but But deliver deliver us from from evil. evil. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Mary, Mother of God, you are the Queen of the world and the Queen of angels and saints. Pray for us before the throne of your Son that we may remain close to him in all we do. We ask through Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hope everyone has a beautiful weekend. Don't forget to thank God, praise Him, and we'll see you on Monday.